welcome to another episode of Genealogy at the Library. You know, it says episode six. Well, episode one was just a general introduction of getting you into genealogy. Episode two, some useful websites. Three and four, we dealt with the federal census. Episode five, everything about names, surnames, given names, nicknames. Well, today, episode six, I am going to concentrate on showing you things that you can research on the state of Michigan. As we conduct our research, we should always be open to the possibility that our ancestors are not just going to be in the location we think they are going to be. As you conduct research into your grandparents or maybe even into your great grandparents, their siblings or possibly cousins, which are part of your genealogical tree, you might discover that they are not in the similar location as your direct ancestors. You might find that an uncle is up in the Saginaw Bay area as a fisherman. Maybe a cousin is up here in Presque Isle in Rogers City and he is working on the Great Lakes for the Bradley Transportation Company. Maybe an aunt listed as a school teacher is up here in Schoolcraft County in the UP. Or, as you take a look at occupations and discover that an uncle may have been listed as a miner or a logger, your research might point you toward Marquette, Ontonagon, Houghton counties, again in the UP. You never know where you will end up. And that's just part of the fun with genealogy, is to be open to that exploration, to be open to that journey to wherever your family history takes you. Again, we are going to concentrate on Michigan resources. There are 83 counties in the state of Michigan. Now, some of you will venture to a variety of counties, some of you may not. Some of you may experience where your research is centered in a particular city, Detroit, Bay City, Lansing, Grand Rapids, Muskegon, Munising. That's all fine and dandy. However, our ancestors went beyond those big municipalities, and many of them ended up in the smaller towns, the smaller villages. And it's when we find these ancestors in these smaller locations that we are going to be dealing with townships. In my research, if I happen to find a ancestor in the small town of Ida, Michigan, I will, hap I will need not to look at the city records, but I will need to find the township offices and search records there. I will need to find and seek out a library possibly in Ida, or possibly the county, where I can also conduct my research. So townships are going to play a role in your research. The specific record holdings, whether it be a village, a town, a city, a township, and or county, will vary. There could be times where a particular county is going to have this wonderful collection of records. And it could be quite possibly that the county next door, there might have been a flood 
there might have been a fire, some kind of a disaster, where the records are not in existence anymore. So that is important to remember. Just because you get this from a particular county does not guarantee that you will be getting the same amount of information from other counties or other townships. The same holds true with online availability. So as you are sitting in your house or sitting in a library when you can get into the libraries and you are researching a particular county and you see what online resources are available, be prepared to do something the old-fashioned way. And that's to reach out to government offices, to churches, to libraries, to museums, and directly contact them, asking them, what kind of genealogical records do they have and how accessible are they to you if maybe you go there or via post. I am going to be concentrating on these particular websites today. Now, you don't have to start scribbling everything down. Don't have to worry about that. Because if you go to the library's homepage and on our black taskbar, put your cursor on research and you'll see a drop down and click on genealogy. All of these websites are there for you now. So again, you don't have to worry about writing all these down and wonder, oh, I wish he would go back a screen because I missed that. Don't have to worry about that. So just sit back, relax, and listen to the explanation of these particular websites that I know are going to help you with your research in the state of Michigan. We start out with number one, and that being Michiganology. Marvelous website. Because of these particular collections that they have available to you. Death records. From 1921 through 1943, if you research this website, you can actually pick up an image of the death record. From 44 to 52, it's an index only. Main Streets collection, and this is going to be sort of cool. Images of street scenes from Michigan cities and towns. This might be a way to put some color into your genealogical research, color into your ancestry. Rural property inventory cards. If you happen to be researching Oakland and Grand Traverse County, take a gander at those. And then, of course, state census records. You can go into the state census records, see what kind of information you can find, similar to the federal census, but different dates. So I'm going to start off searching the collection. Now. I usually type my last name in, but when I typed in Catafias, eh, came up zero hits. Well, that's not going to help me explain this particular database. So I needed to find a surname that I knew existed. Prior to coming to Livonia, I worked for the Monroe County Library System close to 20 years. And working there, I became the genealogist and discovered that one of the prominent surnames for Monroe County happened to be the surname of Navarre. Now, if I would have just typed in Navarre into this collection, trust me, there would have been thousands. I wanted to narrow that search down. And so what I did 
is I simply typed in the word Monroe. My search results came up with 237 hits. Now the fascinating thing is, you never know what you're going to find until you type in your search term or terms and pull up the results. The first collection that came up were something called private claims. Now private claims happened a long, long time ago. And the important thing here to look at is we have Robert Navarre, Francois Navarre, Isidore Navarre, and Jacques Navarre. I have four different Navars. Are they related? What is their relationship to one another? Father, son, brothers, cousins, who knows? But now I have names that I can begin researching. And another fascinating thing of this particular results is the number of acres that they were able to claim. Robert, 134.66 acres on the north side of the River Raisin. Francois, 510 acres on the south side. Isidore, 349 acres. Jacques, 343 acres. That's a lot of land. So that would really intrigue me to go and discover where and the proximity of these lands are to one another. As I scroll down, I come across other collections, other images. I happen to have a photo of Alexander Navarre. Love to put photos into a genealogy, into ancestry. The reason being, I've got a face with data. You just have to make sure that the person you're putting in there is in fact the individual that you're citing. I'm going to pay close attention to this person here, Leona Barrow, and we're going to pull up that particular death record. During my time in Monroe, I found it a privilege that I became friends with a gentleman that I considered a wonderful historian, a marvelous genealogist. He just knew Monroe. And every Monday he would come into the library and we would research. We would research genealogy, we would research Monroe history, we would research Michigan history, uh, maritime history. One of the things I learned from him was when we were researching photos, he always emphasized, look into the photo. Look into the photo and see what information there is. I've taken that philosophy and I apply it to genealogical records. So I take this philosophy and give it to you with the premise of what's in the record. Let's really take a look and see what is in this particular death certificate. What kind of information can we obtain? So we see Leona Barrow, and here is her husband, William. Of note, he is 68, and when Leona passes away, she is 53. Was this the first marriage for each of them? Was it the second marriage for each of them? A genealogical question. 
we can see that Leona was born in Rockwood, Michigan, which is just above the Monroe County line in Wayne County. Her father, Henry Navarre, was born in Monroe, Michigan, and then her mother, Emma Lafleur. well, we, according to the record, we don't really know her birthplace. Here we see that she is buried at St. Mary's Cemetery. That clue in itself would then have me research. If she was born in Rockwood, is there a chance that she was either baptized and or married at St. Mary's Rockwood? I would narrow my search to that particular Catholic church first and then expand my research from there. Since I know Henry Navarre was born in Monroe, I would concentrate all of my research there and then to see whether or not he and Emma, were they married in Monroe? Were they married in Rockwood? with the hope of filling this particular unknown in. We see the cause of death, the date of death, the address, but it's looking at these particular clues. One more. The informant was Robert Barrow. Possibly a son. Okay. Always just take the time and investigate what the record says inside before you put it into your records. The Main Street Collection depicts street scenes from various towns and cities throughout the state of Michigan. And the, the images can include everything. Now, I simply typed in the term Marquette. Let's take, for example, I'm going through my research and I discovered that an ancestor of mine happened to, I happened to discover him in the 1850 federal census in Marquette as a logger. I want to know a little bit more about Marquette. I want to know about what it was like in the 1850s. So by going to Main Streets, it's my hope that I'm able to discover something about that. Again, search box, click search, and up comes 79 hits for the term Marquette. Because I am looking for information on the city, or possibly the county of Marquette, well, the computer doesn't really know that. It's just going to pull up everything Marquette. So if you happen to look here, it's Nagani aerial view from 1821. Marquette County, there's the key word. Sault Ste. Marie, we know that Sault Ste. Marie isn't in Marquette County. Why did this come up? Due to the fact of this word right here, Father Marquette. A black and white print of a drawing of how the Sioux looked when Father Marquette gave it its name. That's the reason why that image came up. And here is Marquette, a drawing of Marquette in 1850. That's the one I want. That's what I need to really take a look at and take a look at how the city was depicted in 1850. Lake Superior, a sailing ship. Downtown Marquette, the docks. So I can get some idea of my ancestor living in this particular region with all of these, with this forest grown around the city of Marquette. Now I have an idea of how they lived back in 1850. Our next stop is the Michigan Genealogical Council. As you go through your research, 
you will look for little stepping stones to help you find information from a variety of counties. This is a marvelous place to conduct your research. Newsletters. Newsletters of the society are going to contain information from the widest variety of genealogical societies throughout the state. If you have the time, it'd be worth your while to go through some of these newsletters and discover not necessarily the officers or anything like that, but to use the keyword search and discover what's available in Monroe County, Schoolcraft County, Tuscola County, and see what pops up. You never know what you're going to find. Research tools. All of these research tools are going to be available to you at one click. And on the next slide, we're going to go through three of them. I wasn't able to go through all of them, but three of them you will definitely see how beneficial this is. The Michigan Societies List, a marvelous place on your research trip. By clicking on that particular link, you are going to discover all of the genealogical societies in the state of Michigan. Therefore, by going here, I can click on Bay County Genealogical Society and see all the information that they have on their website. Go right to the website. I can go to the Western Wayne County Genealogical Society's website right from here. I can go to the Northville Genealogical Society's website right from here. If I happen to know the location of my ancestor in the state of Michigan and know various counties around and working my way out, by going to the societies list, I can see, oh, this one, this county has a society, this one doesn't, and plan accordingly from there. It will also take you to the archives of Michigan along with the library of Michigan. So consider this like a one-stop shopping spot for you. Now I did mention Michigan research tools and I'm going to concentrate on three of them only. That being death records, ethnic research, and then something called GenWebs. This is just the collection of death records that they have available to you from there. Now, right off the bat, there's Michiganology. And then this something called Gendus. We are going to be touching on that in a little bit. But you can also see here Clinton County, Emmett County, Genesee County, Grand Traverse, Macomb, Washtenaw. These are counties that have basically created a death index, counties. Here at the library, we have the Livonia Observer Index for obituaries from 1955 to the present. So you don't see that on this particular death index. That just reinforces the need to search out libraries, museums, historical societies, genealogical societies, and see what they have to supplement these other kind of indexes. Ethnic research. And here we see African American, Canadian archives, Finnish American, genealogy guides from Grand Rapids, the Jewish Holocaust Memorial Center, Michigan Ethnic Directory, Native American, Native American. Another thing you can do to help you search out these ethnic genealogical societies is simply go right to Google. And if I am, of course I'm a Polish descent with Katafiasz as a surname, I can type in 
Polish Genealogy Society Michigan and see what pops up. My ancestors, as you know, if you recall, are from the city of Toledo. I can sort of narrow that down. Polish Genealogy Society Toledo and see what's there. So you always have that particular option. Just change the ethnic uh, group there and see what in fact pops up. And finally, GenWebs. You have the Michigan GenWeb, the U.S. GenWeb, and the Canadian GenWeb. And your question is, what is a GenWeb? The Michigan GenWeb, along with all the other states, is a volunteer grouping of counties within the state where a person or persons take it upon themselves to collect information, genealogical information, and make it available to you to research. By coming here and clicking on counties, up comes the entire Michigan County selection list. And as you can see, this is just a partial listing, of course, of the various Michigan County GenWebs. That the date of the county it's created, when it was organized, the parent county, meaning how Alcona arrived, coming out of Alpena and Sheboygan. Harrisville being the county seat and the county coordinator of the Alcona County GenWeb is Joe Mark Markovich. Now, with these GenWebs, because you have a coordinator or coordinators, every GenWeb is going to be different. Every GenWeb will offer different resources for you to utilize. Some may be quite extensive. Some may be, show a whole different format than the other. Others again, Monroe County GenWeb and the information that you have access to. All of these GenWebs, you must remember, are created and overseen by volunteers. The information that is on these particular GenWebs take time to get there. And it's only because of genealogists willing to share their research that these, in fact, are created. So when you go out and discover these particular gen webs know full well that these were created by genealogists like you who are conducting research and compiling research and now making it available through this venue online. The Michigan Family History Network. As I mentioned before at the beginning of the presentation, your journey may take you to a variety of locations, and some you might not be that familiar with. Well, you know, that's okay. Because if you go to the Michigan Family History Network, you can find information on all 83 counties in Michigan. I'm just going to pick Monroe here. And the first thing that comes up is that of the county courthouse. Please recall at the beginning I said that you may have to contact a government entity to see what kind of records are available for your research. There would be the location of that governmental unit for Monroe County Courthouse. Next comes data on this site. These are, this is information that you could actually 
pull right up from this particular website. Then they have other sites with data. That being, it's going to take you to a whole different um, website. Family Search, you already know, Seeking Michigan, Michigan, Gen Web, Monroe County, Cindy's List, you already know of, the Genealogical Society of Monroe County. Again, even though it's taking you away from this page, you're still going to be getting information on that particular county. So as you explore, please keep this one nearby so that you can see what's going on in the county. Now let's take for example, you're going through letters and things like this, and as you go through the letters, you're coming across places that you might not be familiar with. Well, this thing called Michigan Place Names is going to help you with that. So as you see here, even though you are familiar with a particular area, I've grown up in Monroe County, I've been there all my life, you know, you know everything about it. Well, not necessarily, because there might have been places that aren't in existence anymore. And that being the case, how can I get some information on it, let alone, where was it? So maybe great grandma was trying to find information, on, or you're trying to find information on this place great grandma was referring to in a letter. So I'm going to stick with Monroe. And as you can see, here's this alphabetical listing, but there is the full listing of all these towns in Monroe County. Now let's take, for example, here's something called Fortuna. Fortuna, Michigan. Well, did a Google search today and, well, didn't see anything on Fortuna, Michigan. What this site provides me with, though, is a clue. Fortuna happens to be in Bedford Township. There is my clue. There is my starting point. So I can focus on Bedford Township and try to obtain as much information as I possibly can on this particular place that was discovered in my ancestors' letters, recollections, etc. So anytime you run across this cities, their villages or towns that you don't know of, that is a wonderful place to start the Michigan place names. Gendis. Or the full name, the Genealogical Death Indexing System. The years, 1867 through 1897. That is your chronology. That's your chronological capsule. And before we get into doing a quick search, I just thought some of the charts on this particular website was sort of interesting. First of all, the number of deaths in Gendis in a particular year, but also the number and percent Gendis rec records by descendants places of birth. And as you see here, the percentage and the number of the amount of people from a particular location. So Sweden, well, 2,500 from there. United Kingdom is quite large. Poland, well, 978. The German Empire, quite large, 26,000 and Canada, 24,000. And sticking with that, common last names. And they have, I could only cut it off at the top 20. But you could just go and see how many surnames are cited in this 30-year capsule, along with first names of males and first names of females. Now, the one thing I didn't do is I didn't search Navarre for this particular last name, though that would have been sort of cool, but maybe I'll do that after the presentation just for myself. I know Catafias isn't going to be here. Not going to do that. Well, I'm going to just pick another name and I'm going to go with Frazier. 
I'm not going to put a first name in, anything like that. I just want to click search and see what comes up. So here is a partial listing of all of the Frasers. I'm just going to pick one at random and just to show you the record that comes up. So we have this Donald G. Frazier right there. Okay. Date of death was December 6th, 1881. And now you see ledger page and record number. That's for the actual uh, death record book. Is, died in Ypsilanti, Washtenaw County, married, he was 41 years old, typhoid fever. So typhoid fever was going, was, was going on in Ypsilanti in 1881. Again, look at the record. Could there be information in the newspaper about a typhoid fever outbreak in Ypsilanti, and if so, could Donald be in there? Could Donald have an obituary in an Ypsilanti newspaper? He was born in Canada. He was a blacksmith. Here's his father's name, his mother's name. The only thing we didn't get, the wife's name. Well, that would be up to you to do a little bit of research. But looking into the record, all of the clues that are prevalent to help learn more about Donald. Our next stop is a place called Michigan Memories. Michigan Memories, going to focus on institutions, focus on collections. The institutions that are made part of this Michigan Memories collection, the Arab American National Museum, the Bentley Historical Library, Capital Area District Library, Detroit Historical Society, Detroit Public Library, Grand Rapids Public Library, uh, GVSU, MSU Library, Oakland County Historical Resources, U of M Libraries, Wayne State Libraries, WMU Libraries. It is a marvelous collection. You can enter a surname, a business, a location, and see what comes up. I'm going to stick with the word Frazier and tells me that there are 69 hints, hits for Frazier, searching all of those particular collections that are up here. And then I could go through them and see if in fact any of these particular collections would fit in with my ancestry. By clicking collections, a marvelous, marvelous grouping of things that may be of genealogical interest to you. Arab American and automobile voices from the factory, Veterans History Project. Some 1,453 items a veteran would be able to provide their oral history. So can you imagine that you had a ancestor who was a veteran in World War II and find him on this particular collection to listen to his story, listen to her story. One of the coolest things that I've discovered on this particular collection was something called the Women's Defense Unit Cards. Never knew this existed. I happened to uh, mentioned this to the Western Wayne County Genealogical Society a couple, of year, a couple of years ago when I was giving a presentation. And even though the scope is limited to the Grand Rapids area, the amount of information that you get on these women defense unit cards is amazing. You get the name of the woman, the address, her occupation, where she worked, the, uh, if she's living with her mother, a roommate. But this is one of the few documents that you can find 
to give more of a story to a female ancestor in the Grand Rapids area during World War II. You know, a lot of this stuff that I'm mentioning, you will have to go through and just see what's there. There's no, no way that one can deal with all of these collections and do justice to what is in there. So when you have some time, go there, see what's there, and just explore. The Making of Modern Michigan. This first originated years ago. In fact, I was in Monroe County, still working. And as part of our Monroe collection, a professor at the community college, Dr. Jim DeVries, one of his assignments was to have his students uh, do oral history recordings of senior citizens of Monroe County. And so we had this marvelous collection 100, maybe 150, oral histories on cassette tape. Now, cassette tapes, well, it's not that you could check the cassette tapes out and bring it back, because after a while, the wear and tear isn't going to do too well on the cassette tapes. But discovering this website, we took all of the oral histories to Michigan State University the making of modern Michigan, and they downloaded them to the website. Now, how cool would it be if you discovered an ancestor in Monroe County, a long past relative of Monroe County, and a child or a grandchild of yours could actually listen to a great or a great great or a great 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 ancestor of theirs? and hear their voice, something that they never heard before, but yet a direct line to that family history. You see here, oops, I'm sorry, a listing of the libraries that participated in this project. You even see Bentley High School, so you know it's probably the yearbooks or something else is there too. So by clicking participating libraries from this website, if you happen to notice a location nearby a family that you are researching, it might do you well to go to the making of modern Michigan and look at and see what is in fact there for you. And it could be anything. It says photographs, family papers, oral histories, genealogical materials, and much more. And trust me, there's a lot more there. Staying with MSU, a marvelous collection, which is the Civil War collection. My ancestry does not take me back to the time of the American Civil War. My ancestors came in the 1870s, years few years afterward. But for those of you who are able, and sometimes I consider lucky enough to have Civil War veterans, this location here is a great place to start. Number one, because it deals with the state of Michigan. Number two, you are dealing with primary resources. Before you start going through the collections and seeing what's there, I would probably urge you to click on this little link here, the MSU Archives Research Guide. And it is simply a PDF download, but it will describe for you what is in fact in various collections within this major Civil War collection. So if your ancestor happens to be part of the Michigan 16th Infantry, by scrolling through the research guide, you would be able to narrow down which collections deal with that particular 
regiment. This is a marvelous and I think underutilized resource for those of you who, have, who are lucky enough to have that Civil War ancestor in your family history. We're going to the UP. Regional Digitization Center. The collections within this particular collection deal with Avon Township, the Barraga County Historical Museum, Bay Mills, Houghton County, uh, Mackinac Bridge Authority, Nagani, a little bit on Emmett, uh, Northern Michigan University. It's probably a good idea for those of you who are making that trek into the UP research-wise, quick stop here. Because what it does, again, it gives you the ability to see what is there. It gives you the ability to see the location and information on whether it be a county, a township, a business, um, school, etc., in the UP. The Library of Michigan. This is a must visit site, it is a must visit location. There are things here at the Library of Michigan that you actually have to go there to research, view, handle, as opposed to being able to do that online. Okay. They make it very easy for you to do research on a specific county. They have an alphabetical county guides, and from there you can make, take your pick. So I just happened to pick the first one, Alcona. And it gives you a, a very brief history and provides you some general works. In the past episodes, I did mention something called Hathi Trust. I did mention some, another website, FamilySearch.org. These two websites do have digitized images of these kind of histories of a particular area. So, by taking the title of these books, I can actually visit those two websites to see whether or not a digitized copy is in fact available on them, which is going to help me out with my research. It also provides me a list of newspapers from that particular county. This is very important. Newspapers are sometimes a little bit hard to find. You know, people will imagine, oh, everybody's got a newspaper. Yeah. Not really. And sometimes, are they still in existence? Family history resources is another important uh, information, but Family Search Affiliate Library. This is important. Again, I mentioned Family Search in the second episode and encouraged you to create an account, a free account, that you are able to research. And hopefully you've done that. And in your research and in your looking for records, you may have run across a particular little code. This code right here, the key with the camera, the key above the camera. And the key above the camera indicates you need to go to a family affiliate library, family history center library, to see that particular record. Now, during this time that we are in, Family History Centers 
are probably not open at the current time. However, you could go to the Library of Michigan and access these particular records. And the reason I brought that one up is I was looking for information on a Polish town called Wyszysk. I cannot see the actual record, even though I can search for it, I cannot pull the record up. But if I do find something, I can jot down the information or simply take a copy of the page citation and then visit this Family Search Affiliate Library and pull up the record there. And just an FYI, there is another Family Affiliate Library close by, that being the Ellis Reference and Information Center in the Monroe County Library System. Uh, you can find its location, 3700 South Custer, uh, Monroe, Michigan. So again, you can go to the uh, Monroe County Library System website, type that in, check their hours, call them to make sure they're open. So if you don't feel like driving to Lansing and it's closer for you to go to Monroe, again, that Family Search Affiliate Library is very important for you to utilize. Remember, I mentioned newspapers. I'm going to give you three websites that you might be able to find newspapers, digitized newspapers for the state of Michigan. The first one is through Central Michigan University, that being the Digital Michigan Newspaper Portal. By going there, they have links that will take you to the variety of newspapers. They have it arranged by county. Is every newspaper on this list? No. So you might have to do a little bit of research rather than just going to this one particular location. Another one is Chronicling America. And Chronicling America is this compilation of digitized newspapers from the United States overseen by the Library of Congress. Again, digitized newspapers looking for information on the state of Michigan. Finally, Google. There is a website where you can actually find digitized newspapers on Google. This particular collection is a static collection. They do not add to it anymore. But if you go to www.news.google.com backslash newspapers, which is again going to be on that list of websites off of our genealogy page, here is the listing of newspapers that is available to you. So you can see quite a bit from Ann Arbor, you know, Flint, Ludington, Manistee, Owasso, Tecumseh, Three Rivers. Not only do they have the Michigan, but quite a few other states as well. Probably in the next couple of months, there will also be a listing of all of the newspapers itemized by state that is available on this particular website. Along with the national newspapers, we're also going to have an international listing of newspapers on Google Newspapers. So look for that in the next couple of months. So finally, locations of resources throughout the state. Number one, government offices. Township, village, city, county, state. It's okay to contact them. It's okay to do a preemptive call out to see what records are available and their availability to you. You see, libraries and archives are highlighted in red. The most, since I am a librarian for the past 30 some odd years, Every library, every archive is different. 
research the public library in a particular area. If it is part of a county system, investigate the county system. Look on their website, research the website, look for genealogy, look for local history, look for family history, pioneer families, little clues that will allow you to see and pull up information, historical kind of information, ancestral information that they have available online. Museums is another great place to look. Universities and colleges. You're thinking, well, yeah, my ancestors didn't go to Wayne State. My ancestors didn't go to Northern Michigan University or Michigan Tech. A lot of times the universities and colleges have taken it upon themselves to digitize materials. Just like MSU did with the making of modern Michigan and the Civil War collection, a lot of other universities and colleges are doing the same thing. It's very important for you to investigate that. Genealogical and historical societies, again, important for you to see what is out there. Do they have links? Do they have indexes? What kind of records do they have on their website? You take a look at the Livonia, Histo uh, Livonia Historical Society. I recently discovered that they actually digitized the Livonian from 1942 through 1945 or 47, I believe. What a great collection of information to go back and see what was going on in Livonia during the time of World War II and all the information contained therein. And that was found on the Historical Society's website. Churches and church administrative offices. Don't expect to find a lot of church records online. You will have to go to and research a diocese a synod or a general assembly, the over, overruling body of a particular church, and inquire where are these particular records if they are in fact available. If you need help, look for this particular book, and it's available at libraries throughout the state of Michigan. Okay? The guide to the Michigan Genealogical and Historical Collections. This is basically like a one-stop shopping guide. And we have it here at the library. It is part of our genealogy collection. It cannot be checked out. So if you happen to come in and you're looking to do some research on Chippewa County and ask for that book, we can provide that book to you. And by going through it, you'll have some idea and some direction as far as where to go for your research. Now, before I let you go, I just ask your patience and just a little bit of your time. This past month, which was March of 2021, the, we lost a very good man. His name was George Newton. I first met George back when I was working in Monroe County. I happened to do a presentation for the Genealogical Society there and he came up to me and he just congratulated me on doing this presentation and I thanked him and I left and as I was continued working in Monroe, he would stop by on occasion after seminars in Monroe County. Well, then I came to Livonia, and I offered programs to Western Wayne County Genealogical Society, and I even offered genealogical programs here at the library. And here's George. The genealogical programs that I offered on Saturday used to start at around 9.15. And I would be out in the atrium. And George, I could see him walking across the parking lot, and he had his cup of coffee and his one donut in his paper bag, whether it be probably stopped at Looney Bakery on the way in. And he would come in, sit down, and we would just start chatting. And people would start coming in, and I would wave, recognizing the folks, and he would wave, 
and just carry on these marvelous conversations. And then it was time to start the program. And we would have 25, 30 people here. And George would always sit right over there on my right. <laughs> during my presentations, I always love people asking me questions during the program. I would rather answer the question right then and there than wait for the end. And it was during these question and answer periods that I, could, I knew I could always count on George for one to provide some guidance to the people in answering their questions. I still have an email from him. I can still say, George the Fig Newton. Well, that was, if you knew George, you figured that that was his sense of humor. But in closing, I'm going to miss George. I'm going to miss him sitting there. And I am just so blessed to have known him, to have shared his knowledge, his uh, camaraderie, his friendship, his laughter. And he not only made me a better researcher, but he also just made me well, he just made me a better person. I'm going to miss him. I want to thank you for your attention today. And I look forward to seeing you for our next episode real soon. Thanks, take care, and stay safe, stay healthy. Bye-bye.